Now let's, uh, well, maybe very close to that, the Nigerian Shippers Council, but uh, this time they are in collaboration with the National Judicial Institute. They are set to host the 16th edition of the International Maritime Seminar for Judges. The event begins tomorrow, the 5th, and it uh, lasts till Thursday, the 7th. We will have uh, to whet our appetite towards this. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Jimmy, he's the Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of the Shippers Council, he joins us from our Abuja studio good morning uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning good morning and thank you for having me thank you for, thank you for being on the show mr jimmy well um this is the 16th edition now you're supposed to have this 16th edition uh, in 2020 but i mean we all know that 2020 can now be termed comfortably termed the year of the pandemic <laughs> but <laughs> COVID year. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, you've had 15 editions before now. Uh, tell us the impact that this has had mm -hmm. over time that should make us look forward to this 16th edition. <coughs> Sorry about that. Well, once again, thank you so much, Janet, for giving us this uh, very important platform a uh, platform that we will now be able to use to inform uh, the viewing public, uh, both local and internationally, uh, of the maritime, uh, International Maritime Series, uh, which I can now say is back. Uh, as you noted in your intro, uh, the last edition held in, 19, in 2018. Uh, it is biennial, uh, which is to say that it's a program that holds uh, every two years, uh, but we were not able to hold it in 2020 because of COVID. Uh, so I'm happy to announce that this year, the seminar, uh, Maritime Seminar Series is back. Uh, the program will kickstart uh, this evening uh, with a cocktail dinner uh, that will be hosted by the Honorable, the Chief Justice of the Federation. Uh, who will be hosting his colleagues who are coming from uh, all over the continent and indeed uh, from far from places of the globe uh, to be attending at this particular seminar series. That cocktail dinner is holding at the foyer of the Supreme Court uh, this evening. Uh, that officially will be the kickstarting of the program. Then tomorrow is actually the day when the program will actually officially uh, commence. Then, of course, we're going to have uh, top experts in the field uh, of maritime practice, lawyers, uh, and indeed all stakeholders who have an interest in the development of the maritime and the maritime sector. Uh, that it will be the beginning uh, of our program, which I indicated will start uh, tomorrow. Let me just give a little background, if you permit, uh, on the conceptualization, if I may use the word, uh, of the series. So first, the maritime transport uh, actually constitutes a whopping 95% of international trade. Now, if you put that in context, uh, that begins to give you an indication of you know, the monumental impact that this sector has on every nation's economy, and of course, certainly on the Nigerian economy as well. That being the case, it has become necessary that we are concerned about the viability of the sector, because this is a sector that generates revenues uh, in the trillions, uh, and of course, offers huge employment opportunity uh, to Nigerians, and indeed, uh, all over the globe. Uh, there are key drivers, you know, for the viability of the legal, uh, I mean, of the, uh, of the sector. One of which is, of course, the legal framework that is in place. Now, what that means is that there is a need to have a clarity as far as the legal regime that is in place in every climb is concerned. Business, as you all know, will never go to a place where there is lack of clarity. And as far as the legal framework uh, and the legal regime of any jurisdiction is concerned, 
uh, unless there is a clarity or purpose, so everybody that wants to do business in our climb uh, is very well advised and very well informed. You're not likely going to attract, you know, the sort of uh, business interest that your nation may wish to present. So those of us who studied law back in the 80s will recall that the maritime law was not actually part of uh, the syllabus uh, of uh, universities back in the days. Uh, and I think as recent as even the late 90s, you know, we haven't had a situation where maritime law has been offered as a course uh, in any of our Nigerian universities. That being the case, it then means that there was a gap in knowledge uh, as far as the adjudication of maritime matters uh, and maritime cases uh, was concerned. The Shippers Council, in the exercise of its mandate as port economic regulator, and also, of course, basically a protector of shippers, uh, identified this gap. And back in 1995, went out and stretched a hand of fellowship to the National Judicial Institute, where we then began collaborating as far back as 1995 to institute this international maritime uh, seminar series. That actually was the background, and that was the reason why uh, this particular uh, 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 series was actually uh, conceptualized. So that is actually the background, uh, and I thought I should be able to lay that as an, an, uh, so, so we can actually introduce uh, the Maritime series so people are appreciative of why was it necessary in the first place uh, for, for us to conceive this. Now, as I said, the National Shippers, the Nigerian Shippers Council is working in collaboration with the Nigeria National Judicial Institute for the, 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 the promotion of this particular uh, Maritime Seminar series. Uh, and we've had it for all of this while until the break that came in 2018 because of uh, COVID. Um, now, let me speak very quickly, if you permit me, to why the series are uh, important as far as uh, the, 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 the sector is concerned. You see, the International Maritime Seminar for Judges was founded actually on the premise of updating the knowledge of judicial officers, uh, you know, on the crux of admiralty law, but also actually uh, to be able to assist government in the development of policy uh, as far as the maritime uh, issues are concerned. Not only is the Maritime Seminar Series able to impact in that way, we also have, you know, the participation of mass members of the National Assembly. Uh, and as you know, if there's any reform as far as our laws are concerned, that is the agency, that's the institution that has the responsibility for reforming our legal system. So in our series, there is a participation of all stakeholders. This is the platform that draws all of the stakeholders. We're talking now about judges, we're talking also about particularly judges of our superior courts of record. Uh, we're talking, as I said, about members of the National Assembly. We're talking lawyers and indeed law practitioners and everybody who is a stakeholder in our maritime domain. So what we do with the seminar uh, essentially, therefore, is to generate uh, an opportunity for discussions, you know, so that there is a robust engagement and in the course of that robust engagement, we have been able to achieve a number of milestones that have, you know, that, that, that we've been able to, you know, to, to, you know, to, to develop in, in the course of uh, uh, the, the seminar series. Let me say, for instance, that if anybody today is happy about the cabotage law, for example, which is a policy of the Nigerian government put in place in order to allow for local participation of Nigerians in the shipping industry. That was actually one of the, uh, one, one, one of the uh, should I say, outcomes, uh, an achievement that, we, that was recorded in one of the past seminars uh, that, uh, that we held. 
Uh, today, the cabotage law maybe hasn't really achieved to the extent that we may have wished it because of some challenges with the implementation of the law. But the fact of the matter is that there is a legal framework and there's a policy pronouncement by the government, which now was, which emanated, so to speak, you know, from uh, one of the engagements of the uh, seminar series that we held in the past. Mr. Jume, now, um, I've, I, I, I've spoken about, you yeah, know, the Mr. administration Jume. of laws, policies. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, just as you noted, um, uh, the maritime industry is very important to the economy. I mean, if anybody doubted that, uh, the war in Ukraine and the disruption in activities in the Black Sea, uh, you know, clearly, clearly emphasizes that. So we do know how important the maritime industry is. And, um, well, from all you have enumerated, uh, the seminar has been impactful uh, to the industry. But we want to understand how it, this has translated to economic growth and development in this number of years uh, that you've been having this seminar. Could you connect it? the seminar, and then the impact on the economy. As I indicated in one of my introductory remarks, so there are a number of legal reforms that are in place now that are a direct result of the impact uh, of the seminar series. I've just first referred to you, uh, referred us to the cabotage law, uh, which obviously has given Nigerians ample opportunity to now be able to participate, you know, in the shipping uh, sector of, of, of the economy in ways that could never have been achieved if that particular law had not been enacted. That is a direct consequence of, you know, the impact of the uh, uh, seminar series. There is also today a law that we are processing in the National Assembly called the COGLA. That is the Carriage of Goods by Land uh, Act, uh, which, has been, uh, which, which has been processed in the National Assembly. Now, the reason why I mention this particular instrument is so I can bring to the notice of Nigerian shippers that for too long we have had a situation where the shipping companies did not feel comfortable in issuing true bill of lading in order for cargo you know, to be taken straight to uh, inland ports where we have uh, inland dry ports. Now, the efficacy of inland dry ports is to the extent that we have been able to get those ports declared as ports of origin and ports of destination, which then means that cargo coming from anywhere and anywhere on the, con on the, on the globe uh, will find its destination in a place like Kaduna, for example, or now that we have uh, Kano, uh, the Dala dry port in Kano coming on stream. Now, a shipper sitting in Kano can now simply transact a trans uh, his business with a shipping company and expect that his cargo will be delivered right at his doorsteps in Kano. But to be able to do that, you needed to give the shipping companies a protection that allows them to be able to extend this true bill of lading so that they're able to take and deliver cargo straight into such a place like the inland you know, dry port. Now, that instrument will not be finding its place in a legal uh, firmament, except for the fact that the international law seminar uh, provided a platform for a discussion that led to the emergence of that platform. Um, you're asking about the impact of the international law uh, seminar. Let me tell you, first and foremost, the fact that we now have a judiciary that is up and doing, that is very well advised in terms of the knowledge base that it has gained arising out of the interactions coming, out, uh, coming from the uh, International Maritime Seminar Series, that means, first and foremost, that we're having effective adjudication of matters. We're also having timely adjudication of matters. And every businessman will tell you that time is money. And to the extent that you are able to get your disputes resolved very, very quickly, fastidiously, timelessly, that clearly is 
an opportunity that saves a businessman a lot of money because you're not then wasting too much time fighting matters inside you know the law courts so that also is an achievement in my opinion as to you know the impact that the uh, maritime uh, seminar series has, uh, has has brought to bear on the economy don't forget a robust maritime industry also necessarily means that we're going to have huge employment opportunities for our team in youth. Now, you and I know that perhaps one of the greatest challenges of our modern times is the fact that our youths are not gainfully being employed, which of course leads all manners of consequences, including of course cases of insecurity. Uh, and so if you're able to provide you, uh, I mean, uh, uh, gainful employment for our youths and you're taking people off the streets, the implication of that is that you are now reducing the incidence of insecurity in the polity. And then, of course, you are making uh, you to be, of course, very, very uh, useful uh, to themselves and, of, of course, course, useful to the society as well. Of, of so course, that Mr. is also an, an impact yeah. that I yeah. believe as a reason out of, you know... The yeah. seminar. Sorry. I, All right. I thought well, you were saying something. Yeah, I was just agreeing with you. I mean, the issue of unemployment, especially uh, okay. employment, oh, okay. unemployment of the youths, yeah. I mean, can be traced to insecurity, which is uh, one uh, whose huge conversation that Nigeria needs to have and continues to have anyway. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel yeah. Jume, the Executive yes, Secretary yes. and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerian Shippers Council. We do wish you the very best as your seminar begins formally tomorrow. And of course, uh, we'll be waiting to feel the impact as it spreads to the economy. Uh, we enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for the opportunity one more time. And, and uh, I truly appreciate the fact that we have this chance to engage in this conversation this morning. Thank you for coming. All right, so uh, we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, uh, still staying uh, around production, the real sector, agriculture insurance, and how it affects you is what we'll be discussing next. So do join us after the break. This is Business Morning on Channel Television.